All right, we are cooking here. Saturday morning, betting above the rim. John Shames, James Young, Shames and James here for Sports Grid TV, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Eastern Time. And I'm live in the Midtown Manhattan studio, JY live in the New Jersey studio. And we got a lot to talk about. In this hour, we will be doing some WNBA for everyone, some summer league games today, today's action, where you can make yourself a pretty penny. And then talking about some of the futures from a conference perspective. Who is the beast of the East? Who is the king of the Western Conference? We're going to break it all down here on Betting Above the Rim. But, JY, before we do any of that, let's rewind a little bit here and look at some of the things that we saw happen this week. And starting off, with Damian Lillard, the superstar, the point guard, the loyal SOB re-signing with the Portland Trail Blazers. Two years, $122 million in extension added to his contract, a player option for that 2026-2027 season. What a ridiculous amount of money for Dame to secure himself in a nice bag there. And the Portland Trail Blazers also secured themselves at least a couple more years of potential playoff relevancy with this move, I think. They, they do, Shames, but let, let's be honest here. You know, he wasn't healthy last year, and, and then obviously, you know, McCollum gets traded. So it was about really last year was the development of Anthony Simons. And you wondered what were they going to do in the draft. I was actually hoping that Benny Matherin would have dropped to them at seven, with, at six. Mm-hmm. So they went with Shade and Sharp. But let's go through this really quick, Shamesy. You have Lillard, Simons, Hart, Grant, Nurkic as your starting five. Folks, that's a, that's a really good starting five. Don't sleep on Jeremy Grant as a defender and as a stretch four. Nurkic if he, is one of the best rebounding bigs in the association. We know what Dame time could bring. Simons is a catch and shooter, and Josh Hart is a 3 and D guy. So that's a pretty good start, starting five in the NBA. Second team, you look at Brandon Williams, Gary Payton the second, folks. Remember, he, got, he signed her as a free agent. Nasir Little as a 3-4. As a three, four. Eubanks. So we haven't even talked about Shaden Sharp yet. So a team like them, they have done a nice job of assembling pieces around Dame. Now, when you look at Dame, folks, you know, Dame is 31 years old. So his window is shrinking. So this is the time where they make the move. Now, that's why you saw uh, reports of when, you know, he had the picture of him and KD and Trailblazers jerseys. Maybe they're a team that has to step in and be like, yo, we got to go get it now. So with, this, with these guys, with extension shames, it's about how many years do they have left in their prime to cash in their chips and make their money. But on the flips on the team, not giving away too much down the road, but also having the wherewithal to build around your star. And it looks like Portland's done a really good job this offseason. Also worth noting, Coach, that Shade and Sharp, their first-round draft selection here, their lottery pick, taken seventh overall, gets hurt in his summer league debut. Kind of looked like he maybe dislocated his shoulder or something popped out there because he was kind of holding his shoulder as it was kind of falling from his body. So something we have to keep our eye on there. Of course, Shade and Sharp did not play a game this year for the Kentucky Wildcats. And uh, that is one of the biggest questions with him is going to be his health moving forward. But I do think that he's one of those players, coach, that if he does play, you know, if he if he can stay healthy and and play to his potential, that is going to form a really nice scoring trio with Lillard and Simons as well. A welcome to our Sports Grid Radio audience here. Sirius XM Channel 159. John Shames and James Young here for betting above the rim on this Saturday morning. We're talking about the Portland Trailblazers right now. First extending Damian Lillard yesterday. Their big picture season outlook may be a bit impacted by the loss of Shade and Sharp. We will see how long he is out for. But uh, definitely a, a team to be watching towards the, the middle to bottom of that Western Conference in the Portland Trail Blazers. And another team in that same category, JY, is the New Orleans Pelicans. We did get your thoughts a bit on it. But for our new listeners right now, Zion Williamson, $193 million is his official number for the extension that he signed with the Pelicans has potential to pay him about $230 million. I think it's a great move. JY thinks it's a great move. JY, anything else you want to add here on the Zion Williamson contract extension? Just the fact that, folks, the Pelicans are loaded. I mean, I mean, let's keep this real, folks. McCollum, Ingram, Herbert Jones, Zion, Valanciunas, Alvarado, 
Devontae Graham, Trey Murphy III, Jackson Hayes, and Hernan Gomez. We haven't even talked about Larry Nance Jr. I didn't even mention Dyson Daniels, their first-round draft pick. So look at that young squad, folks. That is a squad that's going to be on the come-up, and they're young pieces. We see what they can do. But Zion, let me tell you something, folks. If Zion is down to 255, where he should be, 260 max, not 285, Lord have mercy on my soul because you got them <laughs> shooters around them. You got a big that can finish, and that boy Zion will put you on a poster whether you like it or not. So shout out to the New Orleans Pelicans. At times, people have questioned David Griffin. This guy knows what he's doing. He's got the pieces in place. The question for him is this. Dave, will you put your chip in the middle of the table and go get the Slim Reaper? Because if you go get the Slim Reaper for Brandon Ingram and maybe Herbert Jones, I'm telling you, that team could win an NBA championship. JY, it almost feels kind of pointless to, to try and predict the futures here when we still have such a marquee free agent available or a marquee prospect on the move here in Kevin Durant. We'll talk about that after the break. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They played last game. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less. Rogers and the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell, Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game penalty. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider it. Like, so everybody is out for the Warriors. In game, live, I all like access. Vandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a four and a half. In game, four live, wins. prime oh, time. The major, the PGA champion. In yes. game, live, overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. Pharrell, coast to coast. They got they got the top player, and I think he was uh, right in his death stare of the Canadian front office because I think they swung and missed on this one. I'm not suggesting that the kid that they picked from Slovakia is bad. I just think the best player in that draft was right, and the uh, Kraken got him, so that's a victory in Seattle, uh, as Denny Bernstein said. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. Steals will be there if it does not. 14 steals so far this year. Actually tying a career high for him already. He gets on base. Like Alvarez, he does not strike out. He draws walks. He's going to be on first base quite often. So I expect the power to increase for Tucker. But if it doesn't, who cares? He'll steal your bases. So I think that that's what I like about these guys. Is Even when you look at the numbers they put up, I don't think they're going to slow down. Like they're only on Sports Grid. Sports Professor Rick Haro with your daily numbers game. Wimbledon, exciting as always. Americans acquitting very well, but that's not the issue. Business somewhat back to normal. The first day, the crowds were down about 7%, still 42,000. And a lot were talking about the limitations, some COVID, but the event canceled two years ago, limited seating last year. Certainly from a business perspective, nobody's worried. But the bottom line this year and the addition economically is the middle Sunday committed. They know they're going to have events. The roofs also add to the fact that there will be no rain out days for television. That allows the extra day not as a makeup day, but as a new revenue day. And it's generating significant dollars. Once we see the revenues at the end of Wimbledon, it'll be up significantly over the next year. Glad I'm going to Europe to see the end of it this week, folks. I'll keep you posted.
All right, so we will dive into some futures and some summer league action coming up in just a bit. But we first need to take a trip to the W. And I know that's one of JY's favorite places to be, the WNBA. A lot of good action going around the WNBA during the NBA offseason. And there has been so much to keep up with as All-Star Weekend has, has arrived. And, and JY, we, we got a lot to talk about here with the WNBA because there are two teams at the top right now of the standings and of the odds boards. And there is some clear separation when it comes to the Las Vegas Aces. Las Vegas Aces. Oh my, is that a tongue twister? JY, that might be a tongue twister of a team name. I don't know if I've ever struggled to say a team name like that. The Las Vegas Aces are at the top of the odds board right now alongside the Chicago Sky. Chicago does have the best record in the league right now, JY. A game ahead of Vegas right now, but it is Vegas at the top of the odds board. You're seeing them at plus 200 right now. Only 10 cents ahead of the Chicago Sky there at plus 210. Moving down that board a little bit, we can see the Seattle Storm plus 400, the Sun at plus 500, and then we get into the triple digits there with the Mystics, the Liberty down there at 5-1, to one, the Lynx down there in the quadruple digits, J-O-Y. Where it does your eye find itself uh, traveling towards when you look at this board and seeing some of this early value? Well, the interesting thing what's happened is, is that Chicago has overtaken the Aces as the best record in the WNBA, but you still have the Aces as the favorite. Now, remember, WNBA folks, top eight make the playoffs. So you just got to be top eight in order to get there. So when you look at a team like the Aces, they got to start playing better. Only five and five the last ten games, but they got Plum. You know, they got, you know, Asia Wilson. They got Becky Hammond on the bench. They got four ladies that can get you 20 any night. But when you look at Vandersloot and what and uh, what Candace Parker has been doing with Chicago, uh, defending them, the WNBA champions, you can't look past them with their pedigree and their experience. Two teams you want to look at and focus on with I am is one, Seattle. One, it's Sue Bird's last season, okay? We all know Stewie, who was, who was Brianna Stewart, went back to Seattle for the sole purpose of Sue Bird's last season. They have steadily started moving up the odds boards, and now they're only 20 cents behind the Aces to win the WNBA title. So you have to start looking at Seattle seriously. But I know you're going to think it's my hometown bias. I'm going to go down that board, and at 50-1, <laughs> to 1, I'm going to say it, folks, the New York Liberty. I know. They're 9-13. Think about this, folks. The Liberty have – the 10th best record in the WNBA, and they have the sixth best odds. They're not even in the playoff race right now, and they got better odds than other teams. What does that tell you? They're dangerous, and they're dangerous because after going 1-7 to start the year, moving Crystal Dangerfield uh, to the starting line and moving Sabrina Inescu to the two spot, they are playing some of the best basketball. They just went into Las Vegas and won a 114-107 game when Sabrina went off for a triple-double. Don't be surprised, folks. Wait, this, this girl is a walking triple-double, and I've seen this girl put in that work, and there's no one better at working out and playing hard like they have. Remember, Laney is still out with an injury, so you got to look at a team like New York who's getting it from Dangerfield, uh, Han Lu uh, Zhu, uh, lady out of China, is giving her them big minutes. Look at them as an opportunity to maybe win the WNBA championship. Value bet at 50 to 1. I think so, JY. And, and especially when you correlate that with the individual player markets as well. Sabrina, Sabrina Ionescu, plus 1,600 right now to be the WNBA MVP. And the favorite at that list, I mean, there's a big drop-off between Aja Wilson for the Aces. And then you see she's at plus 155. Brianna Stewart, plus 190. Kelsey Plum at plus 500. There's a bit of a drop-off there. Ionescu down there at 16-1, to 1, J.Y. I'm, I'm sure if you're on the Liberty and if you're on their, uh, you know, their ability to improve as the season goes on, you got to think that Sabrina's going to be at the center of that all. That probably is a good place to sprinkle as well, I think. It's, it's a great place to sprinkle because think about it. Sabrina is top 10 in scoring and rebounds, and she's number three in assists, okay? So looking at the stats right now, 
She's eighth in scoring. And three-pointers made per game, she's sitting at fifth. With rebounds mm. as a guard, she's sitting at ninth. And assists, she's sitting at third. So, Sabrina, if she can go off the rest of the season, and she's been playing, like I said, lights out basketball, uh, triple-double two games ago, we're going to see what you're going to get down the stretch. But if she could keep playing at this rate, which is if she can give you 17 to 20, 8 to 10 rebounds, 8 to 10 assists, if she can get those numbers as close to them, I don't care what you're looking at. You can't look at me and sell to me that there is a player. Let's make sure we understand this, folks. Not the best player in the league. We're talking about the most valuable player in the league. And you can't look at and tell me that someone is more valuable. Ready? Asia Wilson's a favorite of plus 155. If she gets hurt, can the, uh, the, the Vegas Aces win? Yes. If Stewie gets hurt, can the Storm still win? Yes, they have Lloyd and they have, um, you know, Sue Bird. If Kelsey Plum gets hurt, same thing with Asia Wilson. If Jones gets hurt from Connecticut Sun, they get other pieces. If a woman wildlife gets hurt, do they have other pieces? Yes. But what happens, folks, if Sabrina goes down? What happens if she gets hurt down the stretch? That team torpedoed. Remember, folks, her rookie season, they got off to a decent start. She rolled her ankle. I don't even know if they won a game the rest of the season. So I'm hmm. telling you this right now, folks. When you look at this market, most valuable player, look at the stats, look at what they mean to their team. Right now, the play should be Sabrina Anescu to win the WNBA MVP at 16-1. to JY, I think especially, you know, as we're talking about correlating markets here and that idea of correlating these different markets that we have access to, I think when it, re when it pertains to the WNBA championship market, I'm not sure that that's the best to correlate with the MVP odds necessarily, but I think it's probably better to look at the regular season standings at that point, right? Because it's really, it's a regular season MVP award and the playoff success does not really impact this. So when we do look at those standings, JY, I'm seeing a bit of a trend here and I'm seeing the sky, the aces, the storm and the sun all of those under 10 loss teams, those are the four teams in the single digits when it pertains to the loss column here. So, Coach, is that is that group, you think, head and shoulders above the rest of the W? And there's not a lot of separation between those teams, but from what it sounds like to me, you're a believer in the, in the, uh, in the sky and the aces specifically. I, I really am. Yeah, I just feel like the, the amount of scores that the aces have and the pace of play that they go with, it's hard, to, it's hard to, to, to go against for 40 minutes. So that's why I think you look at a team like the Aces with their offensive firepower and their coaching of Becky Hammond. That's why I, I love their game. Chicago's got the pedigree, okay? They got the pedigree. They got the championship. You can't discount Seattle for what they have. Same thing, the pedigree. And Connecticut has a defending um, MVP in Jones. So those four have – definitely set the standard between themselves and everybody else with the next team being Washington, which you don't know what you're going to get with Deladon. Atlanta started to fade 3-7 and seven in their last 10. So that's where you look at teams like Phoenix, maybe New York, as teams with experience and pedigree. Now, Phoenix, because unfortunately the Brittany Griner situation has hurt them, and, and that's just terrible, and that could be a subject for another day. But I still think the top four teams in the WNBA – are the teams that you have to look at as being the best chances to win, but it should be one great All-Star game tomorrow and one great second half in the W. That is for sure, and we do send our, our best to Brittany Griner, and hopefully that situation, very scary, gets rectified soon. Keep it right here. we got plenty more to talk about other side of the break. Rick Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. 
Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. Pro Football Doc has found its new home right here with Sports Injury Central. And with that comes our expansion into other sports. Sports Injury Central will give you nonstop exclusive injury analysis from experienced team doctors from all three major sports. Doctors with resumes that include teams like the Chicago Bulls, the Texas Rangers, and the LA Chargers. So gain a fantasy DFS and betting edge right now for free at SICscore.com. The Pat McAfee Show. Anyway, Pat, have you ever devoured hot dogs like that ever? No. Like, have, you, have you thought about it? Could you, could you enter that challenge? No, so I'm a good chugger. Like a liquid chugger, I can make things disappear like uh, Badlands. I think I could get Badlands uh, a gallon of lemonade at some point. The eating thing I can't though, Shams. You love lunch. We all know that. Yeah. Have you ever attempted I'm not, the... Uh... I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I, got, I got one or two hot dogs in me. I don't think I can devour them like, like, like Joey Chestnut. I'm sorry. The Sports Grid Network. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. People are going to the betting window betting and betting them the now rim. before the trade takes place. How Diamond dare they bets. do what's fiscally responsible? Let's see how it plays out. Buffalo's going all in right Football now. Football full them. circle. All their chips in the middle of the table. It's do or die for and them. And Donovan being out. They, they've had a little bit of a shakeup. In-game live all access. You could take the points. You can take the money line, and we either go to San Jose to maybe a small play on San Jose. I'm gonna go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Wow! In game live, prime time. He plays time. like he did in game five. They are gonna be all good in game six at home. Oh boy, you want to give the eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination? Get the winning edge only on Sports Grid, your 24/7 sports wagering network. All right, a little magic, some of money making, baby. That is what we're doing here on Betting Above the Rim. We're going to be going through all the summer league action for today, or at least most of the summer league action, because there is a lot of games and the segment is not that long. But, JY, we're going to go rapid fire here. Let's bring him in right now. JY, the Orlando Magic. We'll, we'll start. I mean, we have to mention the Toronto Raptors and the Philadelphia 76ers playing. Right now, Philly's laying four and a half. I mean, you can talk a little bit about that game if you want to, but not a whole lot that I'm watching for. My focus is more so on Paolo Boncaro and Keegan Murray in the Kings versus Magic showdown at 4 o'clock Eastern time. So, Coach JY, if you have any thoughts now on Toronto, you may provide them, but if you want to focus on Sacramento here, I think that's the marquee matchup for this afternoon. Yeah, let's focus on the marquee matchup, uh, you know, between Orlando and, and Sacramento. Uh for Sacramento, listen, Keegan Murray has shown a really good ability to score. And not only score, Shamesy, but really effective in his scoring um, and in some of the games he's played leading up to this. So I do like what I've seen out of, out of Keegan Murray. I do think he, you know, we've never been concerned about what he's going to be able to do in regards to scoring. It's always been about Sabonis and taking the ball away and stuff like that. Well, that's not happening here in Summer League. Now, don't sleep on Jared Roden. Jared Roden, the kid out of Seton Hall, can score, has played really well so far in Summer League. So let's see what they get out of him. When you look at Orlando, obviously we know what we're talking about. We're talking about Paulo and how he played, especially the first game uh, going up against Jabari Smith. Very effective, showed his ability to create off the bounce. So we'll see what we get. Uh, out of those guys, but when you look at this, 
you know, with the points, you know, 171 and a half. That means you're looking at about the 80 point, 80, you know, 485 point mark here to get to there. I would look at over-unders and playing the games live, meaning is I don't know with that number too high or too low. Let the game flow and see how these guys are playing and then play it from there. If you're asking me who I'm leaning on uh, Mm -hmm. with the point spread, I actually would probably take a little bit of sprinkle on Sacramento to actually win on the money line. I like that, Coach J.Y. That's a good approach for the Summer League games. As, As much as, you know, we love to pride ourselves on our handicapping ability and you more so than me, especially when it pertains to things like the W and, and like Summer League. It is kind of hard to find that edge because there's just so much unpredictability. You don't know who's going to be playing minutes. You know, th- there's a tendency in these Summer League games to sit down the better players, guys like Josh Giddy and Qu- Chris Duarte, who are kind of already more seasoned NBA players. You don't want to risk them getting hurt and everything like that. So as the game goes on, I think we see less of those players. So I really like that idea, JY, of trying to hop in live, getting a feel for how the game is going, hopping in live as it pertains to your handicapping here. But let's focus on a couple of these other matchups today, JY. A short spread, the Boston Celtics and the Miami Heat. Neither team predicted to be all that good when it comes to Summer League. Of course, very different than the two Eastern Conference Finals. Uh, you know, finalists that we saw this season. But at, at 6 o'clock, J.Y., it's the Detroit Pistons taking on the Washington Wizards. This is a game I have my eyes on just because I love the guard matchups here that we're going to be seeing. Of course, Jaden Ivey has made himself known, made his presence known early on in the summer league. I'm excited for Johnny Davis on the Washington side. I believe Johnny Davis is playing, and I think he is, yes. So Johnny Davis will be playing today for the Washington Wizards. I'm excited for that matchup, Coach J.Y. I think Johnny Davis is arguably the most ready player out of this draft class, and I do think he has the physical tools to be a very strong impact maker as well. He's proven himself here. You know, Bradley Beal is back in Washington, so not a surefire starter. I think he's going to step up. I am actually really looking to, uh, you know, looking a lot at this matchup right now, um, just from a, a entertainment perspective, JY. Uh, I think you're right, James. And the fact that Johnny Davis can play actually both sides of the floor, uh, shot maker, shot creator, fundamentally sound. It should be interesting to see him play today. But this is a game if I'm taking, um, I'm willing to, to delay the point, it's this one. I just, you got to look at not just, folks, not just the fact of Jay Nivey getting 26 and 6 in 32 minutes at 6 of 14 percent from, uh, uh, 6 to 14 from the floor, but Jalen Durham looked really good in his limited 12 minutes. You know, they got Isaac Stewart, Killian Hayes, Livers, you know, so they got guys that they're playing, the Bayheim brothers, and you don't know when. Shout uh, out. Guys. You know, when Kate are going to get uh, <laughs> some, some, some run. So, to me, I, I, I like Detroit minus the points. I think this is a game where, you know, I think when you go into a situation like this, people smell blood. And I just, the, the way that Jay Nivey came out that first game just showed to me, like, this, this dude's just different. And he wants to make people embarrass them. But at the same point, shows ability to get to the cup and create for others. And because of the surrounding guys with Livers, with Killian Hayes, with Stewart, with Duran, he's got so many other pieces, shames around him. Give me the Detroit Pistons minus the points tonight in the game. And it makes sense, Coach, because Detroit is the pretty overwhelming favorite right now to win the Summer League straight up, plus 600 for the Pistons to take home that trophy, followed by the Oklahoma City Thunder. They're down there at plus 750. And we can focus on the Thunder here for a second, JY. They have a marquee matchup today as well when it comes to two of these premier players and selected in the top three. Number two, Chet Holmgren, taking on number three in Jabari Smith. And we saw, of course, when Jabari went against Paolo Boncaro and the Magic, scoring 10 points, collecting seven rebounds, and racking up three assists there. 
And today we're going to see, uh, you know, perhaps a little bit more from a physical perspective of an even matchup between Chet and Jabari Smith. A lot of length, a lot of athleticism, not a lot of big bodies, let's say. I'm, I'm curious to see if Jabari Smith comes out aggressive, looking to create his own shot, and if he's able to succeed and do so against Chet Holmgren and the stifling Oklahoma City Thunder defense. I, I think you're going to get a little bit more aggressive version of, of Jabari. Um, I think he needs to show that. I think that's going to calm some nerves. I also want to see a little bit more of Ty Ty Washington um, at, at the guard spot to try and get people involved and do what he does. But let's be honest. This is about Chet, folks. This is about Chet. It's about whether he can duplicate what he did in the first game of the summer league uh, when he had 22 and 8 and blocked 2 billion shots and set records in summer league game. By the way, folks, we don't give a rat's you know what about block shots in summer <laughs> league history. Let's just keep it a buck here. So I do want to see what I see out of Chet. But, you know, the last game Chet played, my boy uh, Kenny Lofton Jr., a.k.a. Yeah. Lefty Big Baby, a.k.a. Thickum, a.k.a. Thicker Than a Snicker. Big boy was doing that, <laughs> doing that little dental little bang, little bang, bang, little bang, bang. And, you know, my man was having a little bit of trouble with it. So let's see if, if Chet, you know, is going to, you know, get a, get beat up a little bit inside. That's what I want to see. I know what Chet can do offensively, folks. But I want to see, are teams just going to try and body him a little bit? And let's see how we counteract it. But also in Oklahoma City, getting giddy with it. Josh Giddy's looked very good. Shots look good. Yeah, and Playmaking is doing it. So let's see what happens when it goes with that. And then in regards to the Williams, the Jalen Williams, brothers, not brothers, same name, spelled differently, if you get what I'm saying. <laughs> Those two brought, brought something to the table. So let's see what we get out of the OKC Thunder tonight. Uh, that's all some great points, JY. You mentioned Kenny Lofton Jr. for the Memphis Grizzlies. Let's focus a little bit on that squad right now. He did absolutely sun Chad Holmgren. That's a tough matchup for a 160-pound soaking wet Chad Holmgren. Not actually. He's probably closer to maybe 190, Coach, I would say. But that's still pretty small for a 7-footer getting banged around by 6'6", Kenny Lofton Jr., who's got to be pushing like, I don't know, 340, 350, maybe even mm. more so. That was not a favorable matchup for Chet. But today, Coach, the Grizzlies are taking on the L.A. Clippers. They're laying three and a half points. The Grizzlies right now to win Summer League 14 to 1. That gives them the fifth best odds right now. Uh, there, there, there's a lot to look out for on this Grizzlies team. We got Z uh, Xavier Tillman. We got my boy Trey Waters. I love me some Tremont Waters. Uh, Zahir Williams as well. He's obviously a very young and exciting player. And then Kenny Lofton Jr. and a few other guys here, Coach J.Y. What do you love about this Memphis Grizzlies team? I mean, I love to see a team that made such an impact in the playoffs and when they really weren't expected to. Now to see them also dominating the young guns, their young guns dominating, I should say. Very impressive stuff here from the Memphis Grizzlies. You like them here today, Coach? I, I do. I just like where they're going as a franchise and developing kids. Remember, folks, they gave Kennedy Chandler a four-year, I think, $7 million deal for a second-year draft pick. That's something, folks, that doesn't happen. And I had Kennedy Chandler, I think, in uh, top 20, 21 or so on my board. Don't sleep on Jake Laravia, the kid out of Wake Forest. Stretch the floor, can shoot it, can defend. Love Vince Williams Jr. Listen, I got a Shaka. Smart, you know, kind of biased towards VCU. Love what Mike Rhodes does with those kids. That kid's tough. And then you got my boy. You got Big Thickum. You got Big Thickum. Boy, Big Thickum, he bring it on. He be bring it on, Shane. You see how he, he got bang, bang. bang. He, about, he about to knock me out the screen myself. But I'm telling you, folks, I like what I what's going on there in Memphis. So give me the Memphis Grizzlies because you know why? I don't go against Big Thickum. <laughs> we do not go against Big Thickham on this show. We have not, and we never will. JY, what an awesome job there, breaking down the summer league action for today. Maybe find some of that winning edge here in the summertime. Just when you didn't, th when you thought you couldn't do it, you still can here on Betting Above the Rim. We'll talk futures coming up after the break. Big Thickham.
The Pat McAfee Show. I was joking with uh, with a couple of my buddies um, on the squad, and I said, could be a long training camp for the offense. I like the way our defense is, is looking and playing, and, and just on paper, it, it looks like they're going to be pretty formidable. So it could be could be some growing pains for the offense, which would be great for us. It would be nice to, uh, to t- take our lumps uh, from time to time. The Sports Grid Network. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. People are going to the betting window betting and betting them the now rim. before the trade takes place. How Diamond dare bets. they do what's fiscally responsible? See how it plays out. Buffalo's going all in right Football now. Football full them. circle. All their chips in the middle of the table. It's do or die for And Godwin being out. They, they've had a little bit of a shakeup. In game, live, all access. You could take the points. You could take the money line. And we either go to San Jose too. Maybe a small play on San Jose. I'm gonna go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Wow. In game live. Prime. He plays time. like he did in game five. They are gonna be all good in game six at home. But boy, you wanna give the eight and a half points with a desperate team facing a little Get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. You might be the next daily fantasy millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. The Bostonian versus the book. Staff, an extra person, when Hawaii was at home oh. on the island, when they would play those Saturday night games, you know, it was it was singled out, right? It wouldn't start here till the degenerate nine or special. 10. It's the degenerate special. It's the get right game of the get right games. I mean, always oh, screw Monday night football. Hawaii football late night is the get right game of the entire weekend. The Bostonian versus the book. Oh, looking into the futures crystal ball, seeing what kind of value we can muster up here on July 9th, a random Saturday in the summer. James and James here betting above the rim, and we're trying to find you that edge today so you can get some early value before next season begins. So, JY, we're going to talk a little bit about the, the conference futures here. We talked about the NBA title already, but how about some conference winners here, maybe getting a little more zoomed in with that value and maybe finding some better spots there. So, Coach, we begin out west, out in the W, not that W that we did last time, but a different W, the Western Conference. The Phoenix Suns are your overwhelming fan favorite right now not overwhelming only a 10 cent favorite actually but plus 340 jy for the suns over the golden state warriors who are at plus 350 and that's your defending champion of the western conference and of the nba title and then coach go down the board a little bit from there and look who is just 10 cents below the golden state warriors that's going to be the los angeles clippers baby add and john wall they're back in the fold They got their two superstar wings coming back. They are ready to make some noise here in that Western Conference. And, Coach, I mean, we'll go through this board, but I just got to pause for a second. Why are the L.A. Lakers 6-1 to to win the Western Conference right now? $5 ahead of the Denver Nuggets? Are you freaking kidding me? Based on some thought that they might get Kyrie Irving? I don't know about that, Coach J.Y., but... 
Let me tee it up to you here. Take us through that first four on the board here in the Western Conference before we move on, move on to some of these more dark horse teams. What do you make of that 10 cents discrepancy between the first three in Phoenix, Golden State, and LA? And then seeing the Lakers there at plus six to one. They moved up two, they moved up twenty dollars since this offseason has begun, JY. Well, first things first, you know, when you look at Phoenix, it's because of the, their fact that they still are, should be, the favorites to land Kevin Durant if they can include a DeAndre Ayton and a Mikel Bridges to, in a uh, trade to get KD out to the Valley of the Sun. So when you look at that, that makes, that makes sense, okay? You know, Golden State, where they are, maybe they'll look at the fact of disrespect, maybe the fact that they, they've lost someone like Gary Payton II, don't sleep on Dante DiVincenzo signing with them as a free agent. Mm-hmm. Can shoot the three, really good defender, athletic in transition. I've always loved his game. So I think he helps them out. But then with the Warriors, you know, hopefully you get set for healthy for the entire year. You get another year back from Clay. You get Wiseman back. You know, they're going to miss Otto Porter Jr., who went to Toronto. But we'll see what happens with a team like the Golden State Warriors who will be right there to the end. And then you got to go to the Clippers. Man, man, that team going to be nice this year. You know, when you got John Wall, you bring back, you know, PG-13. You get Kawhi. Now, Lord knows Kawhi be acting like Kawhi, and we never know what we're going to get out of him. But Kawhi Leonard, when he's at his best, he is one of the best in the NBA. You got Marcus Morris. You got Zubac. You got my guy. You got my guy, Reggie, 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 Reggie Jackson. You got, you know, you got Luke Kennard, smooth, you know, hey, White, stay tight. If you two back, you're going to drain that gym in your face. So you got another guy that could score the ball. So they got Depp Coffee, man. And then you got Ty Lue, one of the very best in the NBA. That played a really well down the stretch of the season, made the play in. That is a team that could definitely, you know, make the playoffs and make a one towards the Western Conference Finals if healthy. And then there's the Lakers. I mean, it's a, it's a you know what it is? Kevin, this is Kevin Walsh's fault. See, I almost lost my, my earpiece. <laughs> Kevin Walsh, here's the reason why. Because he'd be coming on talk. Yeah, he just bet him up. Go take the Lakers. Go take the Lakers. Let me tell you something, folks. I love me LeBron. I love him. I love Anthony Davis. But I'm telling you, that team – Needs if this was an over thirty eight and over league, oh they got this thing on they got this thing on lock. <laughs> that, 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 that YMCA thirty five and plus league, oh they got this. They don't have the horses, and you could you could think that people. I think there's almost a play for people to bet them up. They bet them up, and the lower odds they moved up. Now are people gonna bet them up again. Go ahead and bet your Lakers. JY ain't one of them. I don't care if they get Kyrie. Because still, who's playing defense? Where is your depth? Where is your perimeter shooting? Where are you going to get this from? So you're going to need Kyrie plus, plus, plus. That's why they've been asking for a guy like Joe Harris in the trade. But for me, looking at those top four teams, the Lakers should not be where they are. I would argue that Denver, the Mavericks, and the Grizzlies should all be above the Lakers right now. Yeah, Coach, we'll dive into those teams in just a moment here. And I kind of agree with you, right? I look at those top four, and I feel like someone's not priced right. It's got to be the Lakers, in my opinion. That's got to be a Lakers tax that you're experiencing there. I do want to focus quickly on the Clippers there at, at plus 360. And I know they technically have the longest odds of any of those teams in the top three, but I know they are right there. And I think that is appropriate, JY. And it's one of the things that you mentioned, right? This season, or you mentioned it before, I should say, they learned how to win this season without their superstars. And playing with Ty Lue as this gritty, you know, chip on their shoulder, kind of backs against the wall, they made it into the playoffs, JY. So I'm interested to see what the Clippers come, come out with now after all the stars hopped up or stepped up during this season, or all the role players, I should say. Now you have the stars coming back this season. I am really excited about what the Clippers are going to do, bringing that attitude of winning with the talent now. That, that's a team. That's a team, JY. Oh, yeah. By the way, folks, oops, I forgot some of their guys. Nicholas Batum, Robert Covington, Norman Powell, 
Bro, they can hit you in so many different ways with so many different dudes. They can run it up the floor. They can beat you half court. They can go with their 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 wings. Their wings can roll into the post. They could stretch you out. Well, they got like Marcus Morris. Then you bring on possibly Norman Powell, Reggie Jackson, and Robert Covington off the bench. I mean, are you kidding me with this? So the only thing I think they probably would need is a true backup five. You know, Harden signed sign with the Knicks. Maybe they get someone in a trade or a free agent. You know, maybe someone like, I don't know, maybe uh, Andre Drummond. I don't know who's available. Um, I think he's already signed up. But try to get yourself a, a big, a backup big. That's the only thing I'm looking at the Clippers that they could use as a big to eat minutes and fouls and rebound. But I'm telling you right now, the Clippers, out of all three of those teams, including the Suns with Kevin Durant, I actually may take my chance on the L.A. Clippers. Hmm. Interesting point there, J.Y. Yeah, the Clippers could use could use a big man inside for sure there as well. But there is one team that we know certainly will not need a big man because they have two of them. They have two seven-footers now. That's the Minnesota Timberwolves. Coach, their price right now at 19-1 to 1 are the Timberwolves. Uh, behind the Grizzlies at 13-1, to 1, behind the Mavericks at 13-1. to 1. Quickly, before we flip it over to the East, that a fair price for Minnesota at 19-1? to 1? I actually kind of think that is a, a bit of a steal right there, if I'm being honest, J.Y. I think it's a steal that should be closer or tied with uh, Memphis right now. Listen, D'Angelo, Cat, listen, people are going to talk about Rudy Gobert. You know who's one of the best signings of the offseason? Slow-mo Kyle Anderson. Shoots the ball, can create, can defend. He's what that team needs. I'm telling you right now, take a look at Minnesota as a value play. They're going to start to creep up, folks, and Rudy Gobert will do one thing more than anything else. Keep Cat out of foul trouble. Look at them. Mm -hmm. They're a good value play, 19-1. to Good point, Coach. Great point there. I do. I'm excited to see that tandem. Let's flip it over to the Eastern Conference. The Boston Celtics are now your odds on favorite at plus 220, 30 cents ahead of the Milwaukee Bucks, who are there at plus 250. Of course, the Celtics came out of the East uh, last season and were priced as the favorites opening up. But now you see them acquire Malcolm Brogdon from the Indiana Pacers, a signing I personally am, a, as a Celtics fan, am very excited about. Plus 220 seems like a fair price to me, J.Y., but I will say that statistically speaking, I want to say it's something like 13 out of the last 45 uh, NBA Finals losers, right? So that would be the Celtics this year. They made the finals, but they lost. They did not, only 13 out of 45 returned the following season. So you're, you're talking about 30-something teams not returning to the NBA Finals the, the season after. Of course, Celtics upgrading from a talent perspective, but... Something I have my eye on here as I'm approaching my Eastern Conference handicapping. Well, listen, they had a great year. And if you look at what they did in the offseason, trading and getting Malcolm Brogdon for nothing, and I mean nothing, I mean Daniel Theis, uh, they really didn't give up really much of anything of value, Shame. So when you can go smart, Brown, Tatum, Horford, Robert Williams, and then bring Brogdon and White off the bench with Grant Williams – you know, you could argue maybe another big, they will miss Dice in that regard, so maybe another big would benefit them. But you got to admit, their top seven or eight are really, really good. But here's the thing, Shames. Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. Milwaukee, Milwaukee, Milwaukee. You know, you could argue, when you look at things like this, that teams like Milwaukee, if they would have had a healthy team, do they win a seven-game series? versus Boston. It's always a what-if league. But yeah. I do like getting Bobby Portis back. I like Middleton getting to his spot. I'm going to tell you this. If he's healthy, don't sleep on Joe Ingles. Don't sleep on Joe Ingles coming over as a free agent. We'll see what they get. They got Serge Ibaka back. So I think the team that should be the favorite, honestly, is Milwaukee. But those two, along with Miami, and the dark horse, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it, Shames. Philadelphia has got a chance. Because oh, to me, Dude, if, you are, if you're, if you're, if you're going to risk $15 million for one year, you better bring it. 
Because let me tell you something, James Harden. You ain't getting 47 million again. You won't get 32 million again. Shoot, you may not get 20 million again unless you show up and you show out this year. And I think he's motivated. People are questioning this dude. And listen, he's getting the band back together. He's got him. He's got Daryl Morey. They brought in P.J. Tucker. There's rumors that they're going to try and get Eric Gordon. You got all the other pieces. I'm telling you this right now, folks. If James Harden gets his behind in shape and plays the way he's capable of with JoJo, can stay healthy, this team could get themselves to the NBA final. And guess what, folks? He better be healthy, and he better bring it from day one into Philadelphia because I'll tell you this right now, that window is closing at the end of the 2022-2023 season. Watch out for the Philadelphia 76ers, folks. JY, I'm not going to agree with you on your Philly take there. I will not show Philly love on this program if I don't truly believe it, which I don't. But I do appreciate the optimism there. I think it is freaking hilarious. The Daryl Moore, they bring Daryl Moore into town. They're like, you know what? Let's just assemble this team that we already had that, by the way, never made the NBA Finals. Let's just run that whole thing back. I guess you add Joel Embiid, and it's a different a different story there, JY. But, yeah, some really good value spots. And I think, you know, one of the things we're seeing now is that, in my opinion, the power is shifting back to the West a little bit. I think the West is top-heavier, and it has the depth as well. So keep it right here. We are going to be right back after the break, betting above the rim, closing it out here on a Saturday morning. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or TuneIn, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. Maurice Allen, 2015-2016 European Long Drive Tour Champion, 2017 World Number One. Me personally, I keep my game face on me all the time. Especially coming out of the bunker, leaving the range, or even leaving the course. What's your story? might be the next Daily Fantasy Millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best slips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the Pro Football Doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. The early line. With the Summer League, one of those things that was always a little oddity a few years back, but now certainly in the limelight will star players 
on the court and also star players showing up in Las Vegas to watch from the stands. If we take a look at yesterday, Paulo Bancaro, 17 points. And the joke to me here is you can't say this guy can't play, this guy can play, this guy's going to be rookie of the year, but that's what we do in the summer. And that's what the fascinating part about it is. Only on Sports Grid. All right, more futures talk as we close out betting above the rim here on Sports Grid TV, Sirius XM, Channel 159, all across your OTT streaming platforms. I am John Shames. He is James Young. And we're talking a little bit about some big picture concepts here in this final segment. And my question for Coach JY is, JY, what rule would you have changed in the NBA for next season? If you had the power to march into Adam Silver's office and say, you know what? We're changing this. What would it be, and how would you change it? You know, they're going to vote on it this month. It's it's the transition take foul. Um, I, I can't. I hate it. I absolutely hate it. Here's the thing, folks. I've coached at the college game. I've coached at the high school game. You even see kids doing it in both. If I go watch a game, where kids will give up a foul to prevent a transition score. Here's a problem, folks. When you have this situation where you stop a transition foul. You don't play the ball. It is an in, what they call an intentional foul, okay, which is in usually high school, two shots in the ball, college, two shots in the ball at half court. So to me, if you're going to do this take foul rule, you have to penalize that team. It's not the offensive team's fault that you couldn't get back on defense. So it should be automatic. I'm not saying one shot. I'm saying two shots and the ball. And that's the way it should be. You know what? You don't, You want to make the game more exciting? Stop taking away the take foul. Because every game, there's about four to five of them. Every time you start charging teams two shots in the ball, regardless of it, it will change the rule. I don't need a video monitor replay. If they don't play the ball, that's an automatic two shot and the ball. That's it. Game over. Points will go up. More exciting basketball this year. I love that, J.Y. I think that would be a major improvement for the NBA. And like you said, that is something that is under review right now. They'll be voting on it this week, so maybe we'll see a different landscape when it comes to officiating and the take fouls next season. A great take from J.Y. We're going to do it all again next week here on Saturday morning. We will see you then.